Stay right there in your easy chair For 30 minutes of pleasure Don't you go, it's more than the show It's the talk of the desert It's the talk of the desert with Paul and Reed. I just love coming home at night I turn around, she's a treasure Now, here's Melinda. Well, the hammer's in the house. At least that's what I hear every time that I am in some event when Fred Williamson, the hammer, yeah. is in the house. It's in the house. Hi, I'm, Fred. How are you? I usually make that announcement myself. You do, do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> Let them know that I'm there. Be careful what you say because I might hear you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, for those in our audience that don't know what the hammer move is, explain what the hammer move, move uh, The is. hammer move was from professional football. It's like uh, running through somebody's backyard late at night, and you run into a clothesline, your head stops, but your feet keep moving. <laughs> That's the way I used to tackle guys on the football field. It was the hammer. <laughs> How did it become, be called the hammer? Because that doesn't sound like a hammer move, but just... Oh, you want that full story, huh? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, please, quickly, because we're, here. To, we're to, here to talk about your golf tournament. I went to Northwestern. I went to Northwestern. And so at Northwestern, I was an All-American pass receiver, flanker. So I got drafted by the 49ers, so I won't go to the 49er camp. I think I'm going to play offense, be a pass receiver. Red Hickey was the coach. He says, son, you're going to play defense. I says, what am I going to play defense for? He says, because you're fast, and we've got a lot of fast guys in the league, and we want you to cover all the fast guys. I says, no way. I don't know how to run backwards. Forget about it. I'm not doing that. Anyway... After about four days, he comes up to me and he says, you're disappointing me, son. You're not doing what we thought you were going to do. We thought we could, you could make the adjustment. And if you don't do something within the next couple of days, we'd have to cut you and send you back home. And I said, there's no way I'm going back to the ghetto and tell these boys I can't make this little poot butt football team. I'm the baddest guy in the neighborhood. What are you talking about? You're going to send me back home? Ain't happening. So I decided that I was bigger than the guys that I was covering. Most, most like a back speed guys are 180 pounds. I'm weighing 225. I said I'm not covering anybody. I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm not covering anybody. So next day, R.C. Owens comes up, big, famous uh, pass receiver. He gets in front of me. I get about one yard away from him. Red Hickey says, Williamson, get back. He's going to make you look silly. I says, forget about it. Hike the ball. He says, okay, make him look stupid. They hike the ball. I gave him a forward hammer. This is, this is the hammer you get when you don't have the ball. Uh -huh. This is the hammer you get when you have the ball. Uh -huh. So I hit him. I knocked him out. Wow. Red Hickey runs over and he says, God damn it, what are you doing, Williamson? I said, I covered him. <laughs> yeah, you did. He says, stop hammering my players so I could get some pass offense in. So the name stuck with me. It sure did yeah. for a, a, a number of years now. Yeah, but that's because I, you know, I make it happen. I mean, I, you know, it's, 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 a, it's something that I can play off of, you know. Absolutely. It's something that I can use in my movies, something that I do, you know. Some of my fight techniques are hammer style, so I perpetuate the name and I keep it going. You'll never have an opportunity to say, whatever happened to the hammer? Because I'm somewhere in your house. I'm somewhere on your TV screen. One night, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, you're going to find me in a movie. So I love the it. name will never die. How many years did you play? Now, you did NFL and... Um, NFL. I played a 10 years altogether. In total? Yeah. Yeah. And a Super Bowl. What Super Bowl? Oh, he's wearing the Super Bowl ring. Can I touch it? Looking for a dollar. Oh, okay. I'll get my handbag later. I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> I do. I owe you. Super Bowl well, one, Kansas City and Green Bay. We're here to talk about, I can't believe it's been eight years, the eighth annual uh, Fred the Hammer a Williamson Golf Tournament. Yeah, well, I can't believe that this year came so fast. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're moving really fast now. But, yeah, this is number eight, and uh, it's for the Wonder Warrior Project. It's something that, uh, you know, that uh, Linda and I look forward to every year to make it happen. There was a... Uh, Slight moment when there was a hiccup in the Warrior Project when a couple of idiots start spending money that they weren't supposed to, weren't supposed to spend. But, you know, Haley went down and he talked to him and uh, O'Reilly went down. Yes. And he donates a million bucks a year to them. So mm -hmm. he had to be sure that they get back on the straight and narrow. And he did. And, and they fired the guys who spent the money. They had a party. Good. I mean, they, they had a party. And they spent, I think they spent almost a million bucks just on the damn party. So the guy who wrote the check got fired and the guy who owed okay the check got fired so it's all on the new management now okay so everything is straightened out everything is straight money's going where it's supposed to go excellent excellent for the wounded warriors yeah. and by the way you were a former military i'm person. a former 
Marine. Simplify. Marine. Simplify. Simplify, yeah. yes. Good. Thank you for your service, Fred. I really appreciate that. Thank you. So. Um, and yeah, well, and tell us, I'm glad to know that the Wood Wounded Warrior Project is now straightened up and everything is on the right track because we, because of the wars that we've gone through, we've got a lot of wounded warriors. Well, these guys, uh, what they did was they gave a party for all the employees. So they figured they were, you know, had the ability to write these checks and they gave it somewhere in Colorado. Oh. So they flew everybody in, had all this food and and just had a good time. But uh, when they're having a good time, other people are suffering. That's right. So uh, good thing I didn't go talk to him. O'Reilly wouldn't talk to him. I, <laughs> We're I, talking about Bill O'Reilly from Fox yes, News. Yes, yes. I, I wouldn't have been very nice if I had to talk to him. <laughs> you would have done the hammer, right? I would have, I would have somewhere on their body, they would have, they would have had <laughs> known what the hammer was about. Well, your golf tournament is coming up on January 6th and 7th at Eagle Falls Golf Course Fantasy at Fantasy Springs. Springs. Yeah, I have a lot of celebrities coming. I got uh, a lot of has-beens, was-beens, used-to-bees are showing up. Some are walking tall, some are limping, some are leaning, but they're all coming, and they're good guys. We're coming to have fun. Nobody's coming to really be competitive anymore. The competitive thing is gone. We're just coming to have fun. We have a party on Friday night, which you've been there a couple of yes. times. You, you've seen yes. all the guys that are there. Everybody's laughing, good food. Uh, a good, two good drinks, and then the next day we go out and make fools of ourselves on the golf course, and we all think we can play golf, and, <laughs> and, and we really can't, but hey, we've got to hit something. We've got to be competitive. That's the only way we can get That's our right. competitive juices going now. So they come, they have fun, and they go home, and they look forward to next year. Yeah, well, and, and they'll be the ninth annual next year. And these are all buddies. They're, they're just not just, you know, celebrities. These are buddies. These are guys who, that, I, that I socially know, and, and they're good friends, and they come. That's one. Can you drop some names? Jim Brown, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Willie Galt, uh, Richard Roundtree. Um, these are the kind of guys that come and support me. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Dobson this year is the first time this year, so he decided he wanted to come. He, so he called me and says, can I come play in the tournament? I said, yeah, as long as you don't bring nothing serious. Don't come here serious. Come here to have fun. And we raise money like that. And that's, so he said, okay. So he's Terrific. coming. Yeah. So what's a phone number or is there a website that somebody No, just call have? Fantasy Springs. You know, I don't okay. know all that stuff. I don't memorize the numbers. I got too busy doing other things. <laughs> call Fantasy Springs Resort and says, I want to play, and he'll tell you how to do that. Okay. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's simple. And like I've been told that the Eagle Falls Golf Course is one of the best in the desert. It's challenging. Yes. It's, especially if you're not a really good golfer, it, it's challenging. But that's what it's there for is have a good time, you know. You've been well, there. You've been to the parties, right? I, I, yeah, I've been met, to the parties. You've met a lot of our guys, right? Yeah, but, uh, but I, so I don't play golf. But we didn't ask you to play so, golf. We well, asked you to come. We asked you to but come. But I can look really cute in the golf outfit. Oh, well, then but. do that. <laughs> then do that. Come out. We have a band that, that starts at uh, the Boys and Girls Club. Bring their band, and they, that's our kickoff music before, before we tee off. So everybody's yeah. looking cute then. I've got a lot of wives and girlfriends standing around looking cute before we take off. So. <laughs> Be one of them. Well, actually, the, let's do it chronologically because mm -hmm. people get look confused. Yeah. Um, now, how late can you you accept the players in the tournament? Two minutes before tee off. Oh, that's great. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the uh, the dinner on Friday night dinner on Friday January sixth. Seven to seven to ten. Okay, and that's in the upstairs lounge at Fantasy Springs. Where which, Playboy uh, bunnies used to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was up there. Remember the Playboy signs? Oh, there? yes, I, I remember all that. All the Playboy bunnies were up there. So guys come in hoping there's still a few stray up there, but they all oh, left. They're oh, gone. They're gone. Yes. Oh, well. Next time, hi. No, 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 they're gone. Actually, the, um, that lounge is absolutely spectacular. It's cool. It's cool. You've never been up in that room. You've got a wonderful it's view of wonderful the desert. Wonderful view. There. We can smoke cigars up there because we have a patio that opens to outside so guys can come and smoke cigars because I give them all cigars. I supply the cigars. You do, do you? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that night, is John Bolivar is going to be performing, right? Bolivar performs all the time. So he's not performing. He's just having a good time, just playing some music, and, you know, listening to everybody talk over his music. But he doesn't care because he's, he's in his own world playing music. So, like I said, everybody come for a good time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then dinner is served that night, too. Dinner is served it's that night, and okay. then after the tournament, we have dinner, and they, they put on a great spread, man. Fantasy Springs, they, they do us good. Okay, so then that's Friday night. Now, Saturday 
it's actually a nice time. It's not like a really early morning um, uh, shotgun start. It's at 10 o'clock. So well, well these, these old guys can't get up that early. If they get up that early, the body ain't functioning. So <laughs> I know that. So I get them out at 10, man. They can't have no 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. The you know, guys be walking, squinting, stumbling all over the place. No, no, no. These are my boys. Got to take care of them, you know. I love it. I love it. So check-in is at 930, and you go to the Eagle Falls Golf Course? Check-in is right there. Check-in is at the golf course. At the golf course. Yeah, it's right behind the casino. It's right yeah, if you, 50 yards behind the casino. Yeah, if you, as you drive into Fantasy Springs, you just continue on and continue on and follow the signs up to the golf course. Takes you right to the golf course. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah spectacular. It's so a nine iron from the, from the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to know that. <laughs> Speaking of golf terms, it's a man right? Aaron from the hotel. Yeah. Okay, so then um, tee off, uh, shotgun is at 10 a.m., and then you've got in the evening after. Have a party after, just a lit bar, and uh, another food food spread put on by Fantasy Springs is fantastic. Okay, no, I forgot. You even just mentioned it, and I want again. I wanted to do it in chronological order, and I didn't do it. But you've got um, the Boys and Girls Club. M musicians coming in to play in the morning as you know, they, they play as we tee off. That's our yeah. that's our send off music. They play jazz. They are there for, I think we have them there for an hour and they play while everybody is getting set and getting fired up and getting their motor running and getting their competitive juices flowing. <laughs> Boys and Girls Club is playing some jazz music for them. So it's I all it. it's all making everything happen. I love it. Okay, so then and then we have the events in the evening. And so I found the phone number on the flyer that your beautiful wife, Lindy, has sent me. It's 760-238-5633, um, and the tournament, uh, for tournament questions, it's Todd Patch. Just just call. Just call Fantasy Springs. Just call Fantasy Springs, get connected to the golf course, and they'll put you on the list right away. Okay, yeah. terrific. And I like it that you'll take people at the last minute. Two seconds before tee off, because <laughs> I don't play. You don't play? No, I ride around and make sure everybody's having fun and making sure everybody's moving and nobody's dragging their feet. Keep it moving. We don't, we don't want to be out here all day. We just want to have a good time. And so I drive around in the cart. You know, I can't win my own tournament, so I, I don't want to be accused of doing that. So I drive around <laughs> and kind of goose everybody. Now, have you played in your go own golf no. tournament? Nope. No, you haven't. Nope. Because you didn't want to have that possibility. Didn't, didn't want, did not want to have that possibility. He said, hey, the hammer win his own tournament, man. How can you go and have fun when the guy going to win his own damn tournament? No, nah, I don't put myself in that situation. Now, is there prize packages? Oh, yeah. We got all kinds of stuff. We got all kinds of gifts. We got all kind of, we got trophies. We got, you know, we're not giving out any money because we're making money. Right, so of course. Yeah, for the out, Wonder Warriors project. We're giving out uh, badges and trophies and you know, golf events and God, we get all kind of goodies, you grab bag goodies, we got all kinds of stuff going. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, as we go into the break, Fred, I got to kind of brag about your beautiful wife, Lindy, and mm. because she's a volunteer for the Desert Symphony. And in the program book, this is the program book for the Desert mm. Symphony for this season. She does all of the um, animals, the all pets, the, yep. Symphony Sammy's friends. And she writes all of the little yeah, verses yeah. for it. But you see, this is my daughter, yeah. Melina. <laughs> and Melina is lead dog here this year. Thank you, Lindy. I appreciate that very much. And also promotion for the Desert Symphony because that's Melina. a great Just organization. Met Just met her. And this is my son, Francuzo, in here. So and these are, anyway. oh, wait, go wait, back. These go are back. our kids. Oh, wait, where's your kids? Right there. Oh, there they are. And these are your children these are our right kids. here. Yes, they are. Yes. Can you imagine this big football player with these two tiny little dogs? But have you noticed that big football players have small wives? Only, only little guys have big wives. <laughs> I love it. I love it. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Hammers career and about the uh, golf tournament coming up on January 6th and 7th. We'll be right back. She's a talk of the desert. Don't touch that dial. Melinda and her guests will be right back. You can always see something extraordinary that inspires you here. It captivates, thrills, and delights us. That's why the McCallum Theater is so special. Here you can see award-winning Broadway musicals and plays, sparkling performances by the biggest stars, and all the best from the world of music, dance, and comedy. So come, join us, right here at the McCallum Theater. The Desert Symphony has something for everyone this season. Live entertainment supported by your professional symphony orchestra creates great memories for the entire family. 
Experience the finest musicians performing the classics, popular songs from theater, and even more from motion pictures. For tickets and information, go to thedesertsymphony.org or call 760-340-ARTS or 760-773-5988. Now, let's go back to Melinda and the second half of the show. Now, I need to know, the Hammer, how yeah. do you transition from being a football player, a professional football player, into acting and directing? Just like you, I didn't want a job. <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to do 9 to 5. Yeah. Didn't want to do hour for lunch. Yeah. Didn't want to do that. I, mean, I, I did that while I was playing ball. I, I graduated from Northwestern with an engineering degree, architectural engineering degree. So during the off season, I was working for Bechtel Steel as an architect, architectural engineer. That was okay. For, it was six months as an architect, six months as football. That was okay. That worked out good. When I got tired of football, I could go sit at my desk. I sit at my desk, go play football. Once I retired and sat behind the desk, after nine months, the wall started to close in on me. So I couldn't make it. I, I started to feel suffocated. I said, I got to find something else to do. So one night I'm watching television, I saw Diane Carroll had a show called Julia. Of course. She was the first black actress to have her own television series. Absolutely. And I noticed that his guest star role was a new boyfriend. And I said, I'm better looking than any of those guys. <laughs> I'm going to Hollywood, become Diane Carroll's boyfriend. Yeah. So I was there in a, one week. I got signed to a three-year uh, three contract to be a player boyfriend. And you had no acting experience at all? I did. I played football. <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> Especially during the exhibition season, all those grunts and, and things that you hear, that's all BS. That's, that's all acting, yeah, huh? Yeah, because nobody wants to play that hard during the exhibition season and get hurt. Only the rookies. The rookies are playing hard. Yeah. The vets are trying to not get hurt, trying to keep out of the way of these gun hole rookies, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that's a good experience. Well, I mean, I absolutely remember you on Julia. I watched it every week because I thought it was just a fabulous show. And, of course, Diane is still uh, active doing some things. And that's well, I had a hard time being and... Steve Bruce, though. I mean, he, I mean, he had a character named Steve Bruce. Just, uh, I mean, that used to bother me all the time. My, you know, Steve Bruce is just not my kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you, that, that was the name of the boyfriend. The name Andrew, of the character yeah. was Steve yeah. Bruce. But unfortunately, I happened to be sitting in a commissary one day. A guy walks by and he says, you're the hammer, right? He says, yeah, I'm doing a movie. And I got a football scene in the movie. I don't know anything about football. Would you direct all the football and put all the players together and put the football sequence together, and I said, yeah. The guy's name was Robert Altman, and the movie was MASH. I played Spear Trucker Jones in the movie MASH. And I said, no, nah, this is getting closer to what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Just to be in the right place at the right time. It's like that everywhere. Yeah. You know, it's like that. It Again, it, the, the producer of the show was Ingo Priminger. His brother, his brother was Otto Priminger. Mm -hmm. He comes to me, and he says, doing, his, doing the movie, he says, Otto's looking for a guy to play a movie opposite uh, uh, Liza Minnelli. And he's looking for a beach boy, muscular kind of guy, and he's looking for an Italian, but he can't find the right Italian. He says, I think you're right for the job. I said, okay, fine. So after, after shooting one day, he takes me to Otto, Otto's uh, condominium, and uh, he's having a dinner party. And we crashed the party, and Otto was very upset about that. But he said, okay, I'll listen to him read. Let's see if he can read. And I, I didn't know anything about cold reading. I couldn't read a script. I mean, I didn't know about that. I'm a football player. I just know how to say lines. So I'm reading the script, and I, I was doing really bad. And I says, I, I'm not going to make a jerk out of myself doing this. So I took the script. I threw it in half. Threw it up in the air. I said, I don't want this job anyway. He says, very good, very good. You're a football player. You finish playing. You get out of shape. And I don't think you can do this role anyway because you have to carry someone on your back. And I grabbed him by the collar, and I did a half bench press on him because he was kind of fat. <laughs> <laughs> I was good. Couldn't get him up to all the way, you know. So I put him back down gently. I walked to the door, got to the, to the door with his wife, and I said, I'm very sorry for disturbing your party. I apologize. I left. I, did, I got back to my apartment. My phone's ringing off the hook. It's Otto. Fred, come back. I want to talk to you. I said, nah, I'm home now. I'll talk to you tomorrow. No, nah, come now. I want to talk. So I got the part. The part was Tell Me You Love Me, Junior Moon with Liza Minnelli. Played Beach Boy. Fantastic, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, you've had, a, how many movies have you done, Fred? Do you even, even I've keep been in front of, of I've been in front of the camera mm -hmm. 70 times, probably, 75. Yeah, and, and not all here. You've done some over in Europe, too, right? I go where I'm loved. Oh, everybody loves you, Fred the Hammer. I go where I'm loved. Yeah. Not where they pretend to love me. I go <laughs> where they where, really love where you. Where they really love yes. me. Spain yes. and Germany and, I love it. and Italy. Yeah. Well, and you've done some directing. Which do you like to do, directing or acting? 
I've done about 20 movies directing, but I like directing because I like to be in control of, of what I do. You know, I don't want to, that's why I started producing my own. You know, they want to kill me and have Schwarzenegger avenge my death. Kill Schwarzenegger, let me avenge his death. You know, that's the way I want to play the game. If you want me in your movie, you got to adhere to my rules. You can't kill me in a movie. I have to win all my fights in a movie. And I get the girl at the end of the movie if I want to. So you got to do two out of three. I give them that third option because I know they're not going to let me have a girl. But. <laughs> And I'm, why do you know that? I, well, Lindy, it. talk to her. Talk to them about that. In my <laughs> movie, in my movie, I do all three, but in their movie, I'll settle for two. You can't kill me, and I have to win all my fights. I'm not going down. This brother ain't going down. You didn't kill. You didn't kill uh, Eastwood. You didn't kill Bronson. Why the hell you want to kill me? Yeah. 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 Right. Exactly. Well, you've just started a new project called Bounce. TV? There was a television uh, network uh, in the Midwest and East Coast called Bounce Television. They now starting a new program called uh, Brown Sugar. Brown Sugar is all the black actors and actresses back in the 70s. So they're bringing all those back to the screen because a lot of people have heard about these movies but have never seen them. So you can stream them now. You can stream them on your television. And a lot of the blue eyes and blonde haired guys were afraid to go to the theaters back in the day. So now they can sit in their home and watch Black Caesar and Hell Up in Harlem and Three the Hard Way. And nobody will ever know what they're looking at. And, and have all the personal enjoyment they want without anybody peeping over their shoulder and says, why are you watching that movie? Well, you know, it's free now. You're, really? $3.99 a month in the first month is free. Okay, so yeah. so you get that through your cable some company or yes. through your uh, Direct TV? Either one. Like it's cable, okay. Direct TV, stream. You you, you could just call and, and they'll hook you up for three ninety nine a month. Three ninety nine a month works just like Netflix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. terrific. Okay. Yeah. Now, do they have a website? BounceTV.com. BounceTV.tv. Oh, of course, you and know he they doesn't do. have a clue. Well, no, I don't. I don't need a clue. I just make the movie. I don't care. I, <laughs> just pay me. And you make the movies. <laughs> How you sell them and get your money back, that's your business. So, but this is just something that just recently Just happened started. about uh, two weeks ago, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, good for you. Do you get some of your movies released that way? My movies have no problem getting released. Oh. They have no problem getting released. People like money. My movies make money. That's why they show them. Not because they love them, because they make money. Well, that's what we want to do. You make them at so the right place. you get hired place. more often, right? I don't want to be hired. You get hired? I don't you... want to hire me. Okay. I'm more interested in hiring me than I am having somebody hire me. You know what I'm saying? I understand. <laughs> I do the hiring with me. I much prefer, prefer that, to be in control. Yep. And decide where you want to make a movie. You want to make a movie in Spain, we go to Spain. You want to make a movie in France, we go to Spain. That's how we did it. We, we made movies like that. Linda and I have been all over the world almost making movies. We did movies in Cannes. We did movies in Mifat. We've been everywhere, running down the street making movies, not telling anybody we're doing it, but we do it. How did you, because this, your golf tournament benefits the Wounded Warriors project. Yeah. And I see you all over the place as a spokesperson for Wounded Warriors. Yeah. How did you come into to that? Well, I think they called me. They knew that I had a, that I was uh, an ex-Marine, a former Marine. So they gave me a call and asked me would I be interested in, in uh, standing behind uh, what I believe in. And I said, most definitely. I, I said, without a doubt, without a question. Because athletes have a different way of, of, of uh, conversing with, with guys who like that, you know. You, you can never say to a, a, a wounded warrior, I know how you feel, because you don't really know how they feel. Unless you got a leg missing and you're saying, but me, I can say to him, Mick, can, I, can you come over and talk? Now, faster, come bring your one-legged butt over. Come on, faster, dude. <laughs> they go, oh, hammer, shut up. You know? It's a different relationship that athletes would have yeah. uh, to guys like that. Well, I was told by a friend of mine who is a former Marine that once a Marine, you're always a Marine. Well, of course. Yeah. So death do us part. Yeah. <laughs> Leave no one behind. How many years were you in the Marines? Seven. Wonderful. But it was, it was a great training experience, too, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. to tolerate all the idiots out there without beating them up. You just give them a look and says, you don't want to do that. And then you go have a drink together, go have a, a soda uh, Coca-Cola together you just say you don't want to do that man that's that's not a good thing you wouldn't enjoy the effects of what's going to happen to you if you continue acting the way that you're acting let's just have a have a Coca-Cola and sit down and become friends mm -hmm. it gives you that kind of personality and that kind of character that you don't have to prove that you're a man you don't have to prove that you're a physical person if you realize you are you don't even have to prove it mm -hmm. you know? that's right and you have to believe in yourself too. So. Yeah, but you have to make them believe too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. You have to make There's them no believe too that you can't. That. You can't be a tough guy on the screen and not be a tough guy. I mean, some guys try to 
be these heroes and characters on the screen, but it don't work. And you always want to play a winner. Is there another role? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, coming up is your eighth annual golf tournament. Yes. For Fred the Hammer Williamson. Wounded Warrior Project. Is January 6th and 7th, Fantasy Springs Casino, Eagle Falls Golf Course. Come out, have a good time, party on the 6th, golf on the 7th, if you have any energy left after the party. Show up anyway and have a good time. Well, let's go through the schedule again, again, just so we get we'll recap it. Um, and call Fantasy Springs Casino and yes. say you want to play in Fred the Hammer Williamson's golf tournament. Just say the and hammer. You don't have to get that whole thing. Just say the, the hammer. The hammer. Yeah. They know. Oh yeah. Everybody knows the hammer. About time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I don't have Fantasy Springs number, but look no, it up on the internet exactly. or phone book. Uh, do they still make phone books? Google, um, Google, Google it. it. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, and uh, and it starts a Friday evening, January sixth. Friday, Saturday, it, we give them the, the time to have a party on the sixth, golf on the seventh, and on Sunday you hang around the hotel, get over all this energy that you just just used up playing golf, and and go home when it's over. So. It, it, it's really a day of enjoyment at the same time, make money for a good cause. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And on the cost, very inexpensive. I was very pleased. Um, let's see, a per, uh, uh, for a single player, it is. 275. 275, and yeah. you get a foursome together, and it's 1,000. Yeah. So you save a little money there. Yeah, but yeah. most guys never don't really do it, think about saving money. If, they, if you're dedicated to making a contribution to a charity, right. saving money is not your first priority. No, exactly right. No. Yeah, but then you can also play with your buddies, too. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, what is in the future for you? Do you know? None of us really know. Yes, but we you, do. Sure, of course we know. Plans. I mean, I've mean, I got to have a plan. Absolutely. i got two movies coming out next year. One is called Checkpoint, and one is called Atomic Eden. Two movies coming out. One I made in Berlin, and one I made in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So they'll be coming out at the beginning of, uh, beginning of next year. And I'm in the process now of raising money to put together another big project. Good for you. Yeah. A working actor. And you never had to wait tables. <laughs> no. I don't think I'd have been a good table waiter. I'd have dropped, <laughs> I'd have dropped stuff all over the place. <laughs> That's what I would have done also. Anyway, the 8th annual Fred the Hammer Celebrity Invitational Golf Tournament on yes. Friday, January 6th, Saturday, January 7th. Go to Fantasy Springs, even at the last minute, yes. that you can sign up for the golf tournament. We don't tournament. turn anybody down. We're not turning anybody down. And for the Wounded Warriors even project. Even if you come late, we're not turning you down. Yep. Okay. No. <laughs> Put you in a cart and buy yourself. Just go. <laughs> love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, Fred the Hammer Williamson, thank you for being guest on Talk of the Desert again. My pleasure. And good luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you. And a wonderful 2017. Can you believe we're at 2017? It's pretty hard. It came fast. It did. It, it did came come fast. pretty fast. I'm still thinking of Y2K <laughs> 17 fast. years ago. You know? Yeah, it anyway. came fast. Thank you, Fred, for joining me. My pleasure. And thank you, audience, for joining me. For more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web.